we have equipment in the form of uh, radiant warmer and incubators. So, between the two of them, the radiant warmer obviously is useful in the labor room setting where you need to handle the baby immediately and uh, in the unit, the smaller the baby, the incubator use is better for the baby. There are two factors for this. One is that the radiant warmer is radiant heat. Radiant heat causes evaporation and evaporation produces cooling. Of course, you can have a cling film overlay uh, to re retain the water vapor inside and reduce the uh, insensible loss. However, there is also noise. There is no dampening of noise from the environment and uh, the wind rot may affect the baby as well in the radiant warmer. So, if you have a large NICU and you look after premature babies regularly, it's preferable to use incubators for the small babies. Of course, the radiant warmer system is easier to clean, it's cheaper and easier to maintain, but these are factors which you may use it for a temporary basis for a term baby who stays for two or three days, but you need to have incubators for the premature babies. Incubators have uh, noise dampening effects, but you should be aware that the fan and the motor inside the incubator create noise as well. So, you should have your biomedical technician to assess the noise inside and there are studies recently which show that some incubators actually have significant noise, even though it's not external noise, significant noise from within the incubator itself. I mentioned that the radiant warmer works by the principle of radiant heat. So, you have the temperature settings, the uh, heater output is displayed there and you have to adjust the temperature. You can use different modes. You have the skin control mode where you set the skin temperature that you want. You have the skin probe on the baby and the radiant former heater output will adjust in feedback to that. You also have the manual mode where uh, you set a certain percentage of heater output and you monitor the baby's temperature either through the temperature probe and looking at the display or by checking the auxiliary temperature. The uh, Pre-warm mode is usually used when you want to keep the radiant warmer on standby. But if a baby needs a brief period of uh, additional heat and you don't, the manual mode has a disadvantage that every 15 minutes or so it will alarm to check the baby's temperature. So, if you have 25 to 30 percent heat output, that's enough. The pre-warm mode starts with 100 percent and then it drops over the few minutes, uh, uh, half an hour or so. It keeps dropping and reaches 30 percent heater output where it stays and it doesn't alarm. So, if the baby needs around that uh, degree of heater output, you can keep the pre-warm mode for a brief time in the unit. Otherwise, the servo mode is okay uh, in a warmer as well. In the premature babies, as I said, the incubator is preferable. The incubator works on the principle of uh, convection. So, inside the incubator body, you have the heater element and you have a fan. Uh, the more sophisticated incubators are double walled. Most of these are double walled and they also have a uh, um, air boost technique where if you are opening the doors of the incubator, you press a button and it uh, gets a curtain of heated air. So, you do not lose uh, temperature to the external environment. The other main advantage of the incubator is obviously humidification and in an extreme premature baby, it becomes more important. Any baby less than 30 weeks needs additional humidity support. We uh, start with the 80 to 90 percent humidity uh, in the incubator. It's better to pre-warm and preheat the, uh, I mean, humidify the incubator before the baby comes in. These premature babies are received in plastic bags again to keep the labor room uh, heat loss minimal. And when you have the plastic bags surrounding the baby and the baby is under the radiant warmer, you have uh, the water vapor condensing within the plastic bag. So the relative humidity which is actual water vapor content in the immediate area surrounding the baby is increased. And so, the baby uh, maintains the temperature without losing heat from evaporation. So, evaporation happens according to the gradient. If the gradient in your environment is high, they lose heat, uh, they lo lose water vapor and evaporation produces cooling. And so, if this keeps going on, you cannot maintain the baby's temperature. That is why you need humidification for a small baby. The guidelines suggest that we wean the humidity by 5 percent every 3 days in the smallest babies and by 5 percent every 1 to 2 days in the bigger premature babies. However, you can titrate. If a baby can tolerate weaning the humidity faster, it is better to wean faster even in the smaller babies because there are studies which show that if you wean the humidity faster, the skin of the baby cornifies and matures quicker. An immature skin of the premature baby is a risk of infection from breaches in the skin barrier and so early cornification is an advantage. So, if the baby tolerates, you can make a conscious decision, but 
uh, try to uh, have the protocol so you don't exceed a certain uh, limit as well. So I'm not sharing the exact details of the humidification protocol, but this is why you humidify, and this is a basic concept behind why you need to consider weaning it. Uh, the incubator has uh, the potholes, and if your uh, unit team has got used to doing procedures through that, it's better. Of course, the modern day incubators do have the ability to raise the top, so it becomes a radiant heater for a temporary basis when you're resuscitating the baby or you need to do a procedure which needs more handling, like a chest drain insertion with a pigtail or an umbilical line or pick line insertion. But most of the time, cannulation sampling, try not to open because once you open, you lose the humidification and then when you close back it takes another 20 to 30 minutes and remember that humidification has an impact on the temperature requirement of the baby as well so if you have a high humidity you need a lower air temperature to maintain if your humidity drops your temperature requirement goes up for the same reason as i explained earlier evaporation produces cooling and you need more heat the modes on the incubator again it's similar though you don't have the pre-warm mode uh, when you are keeping the incubator ready, you usually keep it at 35 to 37, so closer to 37 for the smaller babies when you are planning to receive a premature baby in the unit. There are uh, modes which include manual mode and the servo mode. Manual is also called the air mode. And here basically you are setting the required air temperature. You do have charts called haze charts. You can review my videos on the thermoneutral zone where I have displayed these charts. And uh, you have different temperature uh, requirements according to the weight of the baby, the gestational age, the postnatal age of the baby, whether the baby is clothed or not. So these factors will affect your temperature setting, but this is a guide. Once you set the temperature, you need to recheck it and adjust it. And after you have set it, uh, once you wean the humidity, the temperature may increase a little bit as I explained, and you have to titrate according to the other parameters. A baby who is more unwell tends to need a little more heat output. In terms of uh, servo mode, it's a feedback regulated mode. You put the skin probe on the baby. Typically, the skin probe is kept over the uh, liver area and if the baby is prone over the middle of the back, you have to make sure that uh, it's fixed properly. If it is lifting, it may sense the air temperature and it may heat the baby more than needed. The servo mode is quite handy in the first few days in the extreme premature babies because the temperature is very labile. The disadvantage of the servo mode is that it keeps the ambient temperature surrounding the baby at a higher level and the higher the ambient temperature obviously the higher the water loss or the uh, metabolic rate of the baby tends to be going with that as well. So it does help to keep the air temperature uh, at a reasonable level which maintains a baby in the thermoneutral zone not excessively high and for that reason in my unit I prefer to keep the servo mode in the babies below 28 weeks for the first three to four days. The extreme premature babies may stay on it for a week. And whenever they show stability and we are starting to wean the humidity, we change to the air mode. There are two advantages of this. One is there is no risk from overheating the baby from probe getting dislodged. The other important aspect is that you uh, keep the baby in a relatively stable air temperature. And uh, as long as you keep an eye on the skin temperature and axillary temperature of the baby at regular intervals, it's adequate to maintain. Uh, even if you have a skin probe, I suggest that we check the axillary temperature every four to six hours, just as a counter check. And if any time you feel the baby is unstable, you check the temperature manually again. So don't rely purely on that because the probe may get dislodged. You may have other issues related to that. So this is an overview of temperature care in the premature babies. Obviously, as the baby matures, we wean the temperature, we first stop the humidity. When you reach 50% humidity, you can stop it because the ambient air has around the same humidity. Of course, it depends on where you live, coastal areas, it tends to be more. But in general, when you reach 50%, you don't need to humidify. You change the water in the humidifier every day, ideally, to prevent the risk of infection from that. And uh, if uh, the baby starts weaning the temperature and you start loathing the baby, the baby is maintaining at 28 28.5 degrees in the air mode, that's a time that you can step down to a cot. There are some units who have a heated cot which can help the transition sooner. Uh, always encourage the mothers to be involved and skin to skin care is good as well in these cases. If soon after taking out the baby doesn't maintain, you can use the skin to skin care to bring the temperature up and hopefully within a day or so the baby starts maintaining better. So this is an overview. I hope this is useful. Do comment if this pattern is good compared to a lecture pattern.